All right. We live. Peace, 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 peace to the family. I want to say uh, welcome back to the Monster Warrior Clan YouTube channel. We appreciate y'all for uh, tuning in. want to welcome those that may come in the track, uh, 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 chat later on. want to say a Lafayette eBay. I want to say Hotel Babette. Uh, I want to say Igun Majube Iba E, Igun Gun Kiki Igun Gun. I always have to give honor and praises to the ancestors because without the ancestors, we wouldn't be here. Uh, we got a presentation today by my brother uh, Sean. Um, that's all I got. Brother Sean, you on? Yeah, yeah, yeah. ETM Hotel, Randy Sean. Welcome in peace. My name is Sean. I'd like to thank everybody that's tuning in. Um, I know a lot of people are leaving the earlier show, uh, which was a good show today. Um, peace to uh, Dr. Oya Maat. Yeah, I uh, see a piece of Yeah, I yeah. always represent um, everybody. Go check out Dr. Oya Maat. Um, she has some powerful information, not only on the channel, but also mail trick. And um, thanks to her, we're able to give our kids something to look at besides uh, somebody else's uh, history. So uh, they get to see themselves in a good light. But um, as you're coming in, man, like the show, share the show. Uh, we get ready to go in. Uh, thanks for everybody that's tuning in right now. Um, man, I'm a little nervous about this one. I ain't going to lie. I'm a little nervous about this presentation today. But uh, um, I put some effort into it. And uh, I stuck to the premise of the, the presentation uh, and uh, hopefully it can be received the way that it was intended to be received. So, again, man, like the show, share the show. We live. We uh, we in the building. Kofi, you got anything you want to say, man, before we get into it? Oh, yeah. Something that I always say, because you finna talk about uh, my art right now. I always say uh, Fatmo Alafie and Fatmo Iwa Pele. So let's deal with uh, good character uh, in the chat. Let's act as we say we are. Let's be who we say we are. So let's act with integrity. Let's not disrespect each other in the chat. Let's not disrespect me or Sean on the uh, um, plat uh, platform. And let's try to avoid Isfat. And let's try to avoid EY Barugu, which is Sean Any Haret. I mean, Any Haret, Sean Calfani, <laughs> Middle Lane. So y'all need to start calling him Sean Ewa Buru. <laughs> <laughs> I just play, um, man. <laughs> Can you see my screen? Yeah, I'm finna lock it on your screen. All right, okay, cool, cool. Um, is my mic okay? Audio good? Yeah, we can hear you good. All right, man. So again, man, I like to thank everybody for tuning in today. Um, this presentation, I got my heart in it a little bit because, um, um, who inspired it really? And, uh, the path, it kind of got me on and everything like that. So, uh, it's the reintroduction of my, I, it's the name of the presentation. And, um, we're going to get directly into it the way we're supposed to get into it. And without further ado, man, we're going to jump straight into it like we always do. Again, hit the like button. Kemo was the fullest flowing of a cultural system unifying the whole African continent until invasions destroyed it. Commission cosmology is founded on the understanding that all existence was either orderly or chaotic. Order was called Ma'at, while chaos was called Isfet. The word Ma'at in comedic language translates to mean truth, justice, righteousness, balance, order, reciprocity, and propriety. It's opposite being Isfet which means lacking injustice, out of balance, disorder, etc. Ultimately, an individual who adhered to my eye through, his, through her or his actions could enter the afterlife as a reward. The ancient commissions believed the world was in a careful balance between the forces of chaos and order. The word ma'at is often translated as truth. Ma'at is usually depicted as a woman wearing a single ostrich plum on her head. The feather is the same one that was placed on the scale opposite the heart during the judgment of the dead. Ma'at principles created in ancient Kemet were the first and most developed tradition of morality and ethics in the world history. Five, four, 
let's rock. If you are a leader who governs the affairs of the many, seek every excellent deed so that your conduct may be blameless. For my eye is great, it endures and is effective. It has not been disturbed since the time it was created. It is a path even for the unlearned, and one who violates its laws is punished. But the greedy fails to grasp this. Although baseness may seize wealth wrongdoing has never brought its goods to a safe port. In the end, it is ma'at, which lasts, and one says of it, it is the grounds of my father. An excerpt from Pataho Hotel. The central concept of Egyptian cosmology and ethics was personified as the goddess Ma'at wearing an ostrich feather on her head. The word Ma'at can mean truth, justice, righteousness, order, balance, and cosmic law. The goddess Ma'at was beloved daughter of Ra, the creator sun god. She traveled with him in the sun bark, delighting his heart and giving life to his nostrils. The primary duty of the Egyptian king was to be the champion of Ma'at in the afterlife. The dead were judged on whether they had done and spoken my eye. From the old kingdom onward, my eye's presence was thought to be vital to the daily regeneration of the sun god. In underworld books, she is often shown standing close to Ra in both the day and the night boat of the sun. This or the dual nature of Egypt has two kingdoms may explain why my eye can appear as two identical goddesses. Ma'at was almost always depicted in fully anthropomorphic form as a goddess wearing a tall feather on her head. The feather alone could represent the goddess. However, as could the hieroglyphic sign also used to write her name, which status of the gods were placed. Here, a lot of people confuse this, but on top of her head, you see the ostrich feather. If you can see my cursor. That's what uh, a lot of people look toward, though. But this is in the, uh, it's a double mod. Let me move on. Now, my eye, the basis of social order is a value that can neither be bought nor bargained away. I'm going to say that again. My art, the basis of social order, is a value that can neither be bought or bargained away. The social order, secrets, benevolence, and loving kindness without stifling personal initiative and work. Ir Saka Ek. If you cultivate a farm, Ma'at castigates slander, lying, defamation, boastfulness, and flattery. All persons, great or humble, rich or poor, deserve respect. Such are unequivocal prescriptions of Ma'at. Order is a categorical imperative. Nadir Ma'at. M. Sini S. Stick. Listen to what it says. Stick to the truth. Do not exaggerate. In the last analysis, what prevails is justice, Ma'at. The concept of Ma'at is complex, multi-layered. To understand it, we need to examine it on three levels. As supposed to say need, I'm sorry. Level one, on the universal level, the concept of Ma'at expresses the harmony of the elements is clearly established, each in its right place. This is the concept of ordered whole, the cosmos. Number two, on a political level, the concept of Ma'at works against injustice. It is in the name of Ma'at that the Pharaoh subjugates rebels and dominates foreign lands. Three, on the individual level, Ma'at embraces specific rules for living in concert with moral principles. Whoever lives according to these rules and principles achieve universal order in his or her own life. In practical terms, as lives in harmony with the ordered whole, the most accomplished, useful, and appropriate human actions are circ circumscribed in a cosmological order and symbolized by the way of the Pharaoh's name and written inside a circular cartouche, a perfect geometrical shape representing the vital sun. Ancient Egyptian law was essentially based on a religious concept of Ma'at, the natural harmonious order which existed when the world was created personified as a goddess. The Egyptians viewed the universe as being in a permanent state of tension between, for example, good and evil and light and dark. If Ma'at broke down, then chaos, Isfet, would follow. The king was considered the guarantee for the justification of the divine laws enacted in Ma'at. 
and consequently the legal system. Ma'a personified both divine and worldly order, as well as the concept of justice. All legal cases, even those concerning the Pharaoh, were bound by her. As the highest judge and legislator of the country, the ruler in particular was obliged to honor the enacting of laws and administration of justice in accordance with Ma'at. Ma'at therefore represents supreme ethics and an awareness of right and wrong. According to the Egyptian belief, jurisdiction also took place in the afterlife. Apart from the compulsory judgment of the dead, the weighing of the heart, Mr. Mean is not punished, and this world could be the subject of a judicial hearing in the next. When it came to a conflict of the gods' interests, the world of the gods itself became the place of divine jurisdiction. Such hearings were usually held about squabbles between a ruined set. During these hearings, the gods Atum, Ra, Raharakti, and Jehuti played an important role as judges and mediators. Even the officials appointed by the Pharaoh were legally bound by Ma'at, who thus represented the ethical basis of the structure of the state. The high-ranking advisor as well as the low-ranking scribe was considered to be a keeper of Ma'at. In the Book of the Dead, the Hall of the Two Truths, or the Double Ma'at, is the place where the souls of the dead come to be judged. The hearts of the dead were weighed against the feather of Ma'at, and her image sometimes surmounts the scales. If like Ra, the dead person had Ma'at in his or her heart, the scales were balanced and the deceased would be declared Ma'at Karu, true of voice, or justified, vindicated. Ma'at and ancient Kemet concepts indicate transcendence, a disposition which ought to guide human action in the world as it impacts the world, in tune with the global interplay of the whole within its universal order. Therefore, there emerged in the Old Kingdom the practice of writing down declarations of innocence. These declarations of innocence appear in the New Kingdom, the 18th dynastic period as the negative confessions. In popular form, there were 42 of these negative confessions or declarations of innocence. These included declaring one has not mistreated people, lied, killed, or ordered killing, injured others, blasphemed, stolen, turned a blind eye to justice, had illicit, illicit sex, harmed a vulnerable, misused nature, slandered or cheated, coveted or caused strife. These are called the declarations of innocence, but were mistakenly called the negative confessions due to the phrasing which begins, I have not. They are not confessions of wrong, excuse me, of wrong done in its to people is the uh, first declarations of innocence required in a word one confesses wrong but declares innocence so i want to just go over that again they're called declarations of innocence for reasons the i have not part is what some people say negative because it has a negative connotation so to sum this particular slide up i hope you get the gist of that so i have not slapped a person today i have not robbed my brother today i have not um cheated on someone today I have not cursed a people today. You see what I'm saying? So can I, can I speak on that real quick? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, basically it is it's you judging yourselves at a particular time of the day. You got a time in the morning and a time in the evening. This is where you were judging yourself where you have to work on yourself. So if I say that I have not laid down with a married woman today, or I have not cursed, um, I have not cursed my mother and father. Or I have not in the morning time. I say I, I I I will not, and then in the evening time, I'm actually going back and examining myself. So if I have done that, as, as that, if I said this morning I I will not I will not lie, and then in the evening when I go back to judge myself or examining myself, if I lied, I will not say it, I have not lied. So if I lied today, that means I have to go back and work on that till I fix myself. So it's basically you're judging yourself for the particular day. You're explaining these moral codes. I will not do this. I will not do that. I will not do that. And at the end of the day, the things that you say that you will not do at the end of the day, now you go back and examine yourself or judge yourself to see if you did, the, did what you say you would not do. So if you did the things that you said, I will not do, I will not lay with a I will not lay with a man which you, if we talk about a home and you 
went out and practiced homosexuality, then you have to go back and examine you. If you said you will not lie today, and then at the end of the day you lied, you will not say I have not lied. Then you know you will have to go back and work on that till you get yourself uh, get yourself right. I hope that kind of explain it a little bit more where people can have a better understanding of. Yeah, self accountability. Yes, some people need that a lot. Yeah, self accountability. All right, so we're gonna move on. All right, it is done from its beginning to its end, as it was found in the writings of the ancestors and deity. My eye in the present time is the same as it was in, in the ancient. My eye is that force that causes life to exist in the universe. To have life to exist in the universe, things must be balanced. Uh, things must be in order. Things must be in harmony. Um, life cannot exist in chaos. Uh, chaos is there. The absence of life is still energy there, but it's not it's not life so as we understand life to be on the planet. And so and our ancestors, our people put that in the feminine principle, right? So it was the feminine principle that housed it was it, we said in our attempt to explain what's going on in the in the universe, we said it's the feminine principle that houses order harmony, balance, truth, justice, righteousness, reciprocity, right? And so the feminine principle is that that nurtures those that, that hold things inside rather than their internal rather than external. And so my eye are those things that are internal, uh, that you know that you know, right? The intelligence of your own heart, um, your, your, your intuition um, about what's right and wrong. We all have the, our own conscience that tell us left, right, up, down, yes, no, uh, but we, we second guess that. And so it is, it, is that, it is that order within us, within our own, within our own selves, that says this is the right thing to do. The, uh, again, with humility, this is the right thing to do. When we learn to trust that, right? Um, and it takes time because this is not the culture that we were raised in. And so regaining that, reclaiming that, you test it. You know, how many times can I be right? Listen to my internal voice. Uh, how often am I correct when I listen to my internal voice? And so that's, in a nutshell, how, how I would describe my eye. My eye is though, my eye are those forces. My art is the forces my bad. That caused life to exist in the universe as we know it. And so are your actions in line with the forces in the universe as we know them? Um, am I doing things in harmony? Am I doing things in an ordered fashion? Am I practicing reciprocity? Am I, am I just? Uh, not necessarily according to uh, the law, the laws of a particular country, but am I, am I just according to the laws of nature? And so, one of the laws of nature say, hey, if you kill my child, I'm well within my rights to kill you and your child. Um, if you help me, I'm, I'm obligated to help you more than you've helped me. And so those are, are the laws of nature. The, um, I'm bound to you if you assist me. To the degree that you assist me, I'm equally and more obligated to assist you. Um, so that's that's how I was describing this, this little podcast. The, uh, One does not make any headway in a concrete sphere of applied morality without mastery of the case history of moral or immoral behavior summed up. It is not a question of good or bad black or white people. It is a question of good or bad human beings and class societies driven by a relative 
scarcity is secured by weapons of mass destruction as a means of conquering what they want. No other people on the face of this planet has been more tormented, pillaged, raped, abused, manipulated, harassed, and damaged than the African in America and the diaspora. It's fed. Chaos for thousands of years, totally detached from any sense of self by design, refuses to keep us from finding order. In my art, order is key. The central problem is justice against injustice. It is not just white or black, ruling class over ruled classes, Greco Roman Arabic over African chemic culture, men over women, elderly over youth, or those who fight over those who lie down. It is at the heart a concrete moral question. If the unjust is with those sworn to do right, those claiming justice, those professing to have heart and integrity, lacking knowledge of the deeper principles of my art, this Western dominated world, though advanced in science, has yet to reach its potential heights of social equality, truth and justice, even at the levels once known in Kemet. In the end, we seek only truth. We cannot be achieved by an invictive, but is derived from a comprehensive understanding of historical evidence. The science of all it, of it all is in knowing intimately the entity in these in this case morality being studied from the beginning to the end. Science's wisdom, shorthand of uh, algorithm, is linguistic reflections of nature, is rational canal, and it the purest truths. Okay, so we keep only the fire. Not the cold ashes from the intellectual hearts of our ancestors for what is eternal is always treasured regardless of the times. For it is the wisdom of the age's classic values to live by. The best of our moral history distilled and its worthy, worthy heritage. Now, there comes a time in every population's history that it must clear the tracks of debris and lay new tracks. Build new trains with uh, new high powered engines to get us there promptly and securely. Take the best from the past, extract the rational kernels, the very best stuff, then get organized. Put the new train on the new tracks and full speed ahead. My art is one such new beginning. There's nothing coming behind this. This is just an actual image of my art. Um, anyone that actually can read the sesh can break this, uh, what down what they see right over her head, which is the... Uh, Something that a lot of people are familiar with, with the symbols above the arc, the J pillar, and the wall sector, and then below that, which is the uh, the nab sign, and we call it, you know, like a, a half bow. Guiding principles of moral living. We all seek guidance in one way or another from others on how to handle various situations and make decisions. When questions of morality are involved, right and wrong good and bad people are often directed to sources outside of themselves over six thousand years ago Kemet recognized that most of what we need to get through life with purpose and meaning already exists within our hearts we simply have to learn basic moral principles and how to honestly listen to ourselves and while there are so many things that are out of out of our hands there's a lot that we control namely who we choose to become and how we respond to situations. Given that African Kemet civilization lasted so long, several thousand years, conceptions of the cycle of life changed over time. The ancients understanding of the world steamed from study of their environments, as well as records bequeath uh, them from prior generations. Now, they documented their observations over time and recorded advanced understanding, doctrine, philosophy, theory, methods, and practices on a virtually everything that could be carved, painted, or otherwise built. The ancients developed a moral system that reflected a deep understanding of the cycle of life and the interconnectedness of all things. Through keen observation and study of various plants, for example, the ancient Kemeti gained an appreciation of the life cycle. A seed grows and develops in a proper environment and a certain point dies. However, in the process of dying, new seeds are produced, which lay the foundation for continuation of the plant's life. Their varied understanding and learning their environment, which in turn gave rise to their attempts to both adapt to and change elements of their environment. With plant seeds. 
Their system of morality naturally stems from an understanding and appreciation for life and the cycle it undergoes. As something is born, so it dies. As it is created, it is destroyed. And as it becomes in a being, it goes out of existence. During the course of life, all phenomena leave an imprint, which is preserved in later generations. The quality of each imprint reflects the moment in history that produced it. If prevailing conditions promoted its success and its determined effort to ensure the reproductions of a higher level preserved in later generations. In every area, our ancients left solid lessons to live by. We should return to our own source, start anew, be born again. The guiding principles do not direct people to seek salvation or answers in anything or anyone other than themselves, for we know that both lay within us. We do not speak to the existence of a God or gods because the important work of transforming oneself and ultimately the world rests in the hands of those willing to carry that work out. Whether or not we believe in a God or gods, I said dogs, is immaterial. It is, uh, it is not important. What is important is living a life with purpose and integrity, one that allows for us to know that in the end, when our lives have run their course and our hearts have been weighed against a feather, we have been found worthy to stand in the company of the great ancestors, the best of them. Those who measured up in the early life, this is judgment. Life lived fully in truth, justice, fairness, balance, reciprocity, and accountability in this world. Beginning with our inner and moving to the outer self, we can rebuild ourselves and ultimately the world in such a way that lives and humanity of African people are valued. The process of rebuilding the inner begins with establishing a strong moral foundation on which, uh, which to stand. With feet rooted firmly in morality and ethics, we may then more deeply understand who we are and what our purpose is, as well as soberly chart the path toward its fulfillment. Morality. The art of doing right for right's sake is at the heart of African rebirth. A main task of morality is to leave a good imprint on history so that the generations, others will, uh, generations of others will know a person's deed. Very key. Our deeds are very key. Essentially, then, this is a seed time, a time for recollecting, sorting, and planting. Of course, what is sown will be reaped, but we must first sow good seeds. As a bridge, a portal of medium for transmitting the transcendental wisdom of our ancestors across centuries. We offer this text to those. Uh, <clears throat> we offer this text to those interested in learning ancient African principles of Maat, with the understanding that the height of one's character is based on her or his conduct in life. Remember, character is key. It's just an image of my no words. All right, moral living and inner self guidelines. From this point on, we're going to reflect on the reason for this particular presentation. And uh, we're going to get into some understandings on uh, moral living and inner self guidelines from this point forward. So living a moral life, one does not need a religion to live in a moral way, but an internal code of ethics that values right over wrong and just over unjust. It is important to take the time to study and know yourself, build upon strengths, overcome weaknesses, and learn from lessons, all toward the fulfillment of overreaching life purpose. It is not how long one lives, but how well. First know, love, and respect yourself, then another. Love self first. Live with dignity, honor, and self-respect. Practice my art, justice, harmony, propriety, order, reciprocity, balance, and truthfulness. In all the situations, you will begin to do good in all things. Bring the best of who you are into being. Build your character. Give your best. Learn from mistakes. Practice discipline. Learn from struggle. Make your actions consistent with your behavior. Seek happiness within. See reality as it is. Speak with purpose. Listen with intentions. Some health and well beings. First, the strong, the sound, the resilient, the righteous, the proven, the dedicated, the very best, then the weak. Strength first. Value what is inside above what is outside. Cultivate good health of your mind, body, and soul. 
Take good care of your physical health. Value learning. Seek answers within. Don't be driven by desires and dislikes. Earn your life. Stand firm in your decisions. Family and relationships. First love, marry, and care for children because the good of the family outweighs the individual. Family first. Judge people by their actions. Be honest and direct. For a strong family ties. Avoid adopting other people's negative views. Learn your life task. Care for what is just and right first. Be careful about the company you keep. Carefully choose the places you go. Exercise discretion in your speech and actions. Community. Maintain professionalism and integrity in all deeds. Honor all agreements. Place character and deeds over relationships. Honor principles of collective life. Know what you can control and what you cannot. Trust your heart and practice virtue. The intelligence of the heart. You gotta have a moral system. Release your egoisms. Embrace humility. Strive for self-sufficiency. Living righteously requires work. Take study seriously and maintain consistency. So we have a, a, a bunch of 13 first. Now, if you had a book of my eye, you should be very familiar with the last few slides that I've actually presented because this speaks to the moral code of the guiding principles. Love self first, African first, family first, internal first, my art first, deeds first, hard work first, simplicity first, strong first, small first, Self-correction first, self-reliance first, wisdom first. Now, to some people, you, you kind of think about, well, which one of these should I do first? All of these are first. It's, it's a mannerism, a behavior, a, an, an action to do um, in all good faith. The one person you can never lie to when life is yourself. Understanding this, one must look themselves in the mirror and ask themselves a serious question that only you can answer directly. The Remits, the Egyptians, developed this concept centered in self-improvement. Out of that understanding grew the principles of my eye, which leads to morning and evening declarations as well as daily questions. I have, have I, today I will, et cetera, et cetera. From here, the problems can be addressed within and the solutions can present itself. Sacred obligations. We are obligated to professionally organize our misery, our suffering, our enslavement, and our exploitation, not merely to end this miserable condition, but to create new meaning to our lives, to give freedom to our souls again, to have faith in our own abilities again, to live and love again beyond the pain, to feel life beyond these storms, to live again without prison bars and enslavers, to believe without fear of devils and gods, to hope without handouts and humiliation, to stand without bending, to speak without stuttering, to have courage again, to have heart, to ensure safety against attacks, to be without want and weaknesses, to be whole again, to do justice, and to be just, to reach for perfection again. The most fundamental principles in life can be captured by Ma'at, Jehuti, Heru. Practice the principles of Ma'at, heart, ill, in, the, in thought and deed, practice justice, harmony, propriety, order, reciprocity, balance, and truthfulness, moral, Practice the principles of Jehuti, head, tip, value and thought, and deed, science, intelligence, perfection, logic, and reasoning. Mental, third, practice the principles of Heru, hands, awa. Practice discipline, demonstrate iron will, learn strategy, and know when to apply it. Marshall. Principles of unity, unity of ideas, unity of understanding. Unity of purpose, unity of plan, unity of action, unity of organization. Too many times we want to say we want to unify, but unify to do what? If it's 
outside of these guidelines, we will not accomplish anything. Therefore, we'll stay in the conditions that we're in. So we have to unify the ideas, understand this purpose, uh, purpose, plan, actions, and organizations. Now we have seven virtues, and you'll also see this elsewhere. But uh, many people may ask questions about them, which are justice, harmony, integrity, determination, reciprocity, balance, and truthfulness. These are virtues of my eye. These are principal virtues of my eye, one that we should keep in our heart and endure. This is an action. This is self-sustainable. These are things that uh, being accountable can bring out. Define your life's purpose and let it guide your actions and decisions. What you will do with your life, your purpose, and your destiny lay within your hands. Choose a worthy and moral sound path toward the fulfillment of your purpose. While on that path, make decisions that are aligned with your purpose. Choose people to be in your life that are similar, are in a similar path. Work hard and be healthy. Let go of behaviors, attitudes, and people who do not help you or uh, who work against you. My eye, guiding principles of moral living, is the here and now of our very best. It is the foundation that has been passed down from the teachings of Patah Hotep, one of our wisest minds. It is the instructions handed down from generation to generation in ancient Kemet. It's African proverb, proverbs in the 21st century that we can actually apply to our daily lives. My eye is within. It's that divine order that one finds in the time of need. It is the natural law that governs one's consciousness. The most important thing in life is to learn how to give love and to let it come in, especially to children, to live life to the fullest, to give your best, to honor your word, to keep your promises, to make better, uh, better the environments you go into, to live with integrity and self-respect, to live without regrets, to live life beyond the storms, to let the rivers overflow against injustice, to fight the good fight to the end, to live with passion and purpose, to challenge perfection, to cherish every moment, to see hardship as opportunity, to not waste opportunity, to seize the moment to win when winning is possible, to finish strong, reciprocity, balance, and justice is at the heart of life. Wow, my eye to create a new African society and unearth and reconstruct ancient African civilizations and culture, we must liberate ourselves, break the relationships which are unhealthy, spending the rest of our lives rebuilding the African race and civilization. In this lifetime, we will build a great society in harmony with Ma'a. From the impenetrable darkness, a new light will appear and a new world will be born. We create the light. We bring into being our own new world. In the final analysis, the future will be written by those willing to live it, then write it. And on Judgment Day, standing on the front line, when one asked by the great ones what we did with our lives, let the record show that we did what we had to do, saw it through, gave our best, finished strong, and more, we gave it our all without exception. Our path is correct. All our problems will be solved, and in the end, we will complete our journey and carry out our historical task. In this way, the future is assured by the laws of my eye. Here are my sources. Nine books. Here's five of them. Well, actually, it's 10. I'm sorry. Here's the other five. You see some familiar names on there, too. We ain't playing no games. Here's the book. If you don't have the book, get the book. Buy the book. Appreciate the book. Uh, you can go on... Um, to Kyle Kilimanjaro or Yara Anev's timeline. It'll, they have the link posted that'll take you directly, or you can go on the Facebook search and type in um, University of Kemet Press, click on the link. It'll take you to the options where you can buy the book. Right now they have my art off for 15%. Uh, some of the books because uh, something, uh, on some books, on the other books they don't, but I think it's like uh, 
where the books were stored, there was a little water leakage or whatever. And uh, the brown stain on a few of the bottoms of the pages, not through the books or anything like that. So they got some discounts off. However, um, if you purchase the book and you are dissatisfied with the book and you do not find yourself in this book or any type of balance in the book, then you need to hit me up on Facebook because I will be interested in co uh, copying your copy from you. Um, and as I say, as I am about the book. So uh, before we get to the last slide, uh, so tip for Kofi, y'all want to um, let me let me exit out of this real quick, and uh, we can uh, we can build a little bit before we end that part. I know y'all got something to say, man. Go ahead, floor is yours. Go ahead, so tip. I'll come in after you. I was gonna say because you know you long winded, Kofi. <laughs> nah, I was gonna say that was a, that was a real good presentation. Uh, Sunshine, you covered a covered a lot of good stuff. You know what I'm saying? And like he said, y'all ain't got the book. Go get the book because the book is the truth. And all the, all the series, all the volumes that they got out is really good books. So definitely need to support their work. And uh, yeah, that's it for me. But yeah, good good presentation, Sean. Another good one. Blossom. I ain't going to be long with it, man. Like he, uh, like he said, man, go cop the book if you ain't got the book, man. Uh, hold on. The book, I hadn't read the book. Is, I don't read the book three times. I hadn't read it as much as Son. If you look at his book, his whole thing is peeling all off. Mine peeling off a little bit at the back. Uh, you can see why I marked mine up. So you don't have a copy of the book, please uh, go get it. My, okay, go get a copy of the book. This is a great text. Uh, it's a pretty thick book, but it's a uh, really good read. Um, the authors, again, like he said, Aoife Kilimanjaro, uh, Takao Kilimanjaro, Yahuru uh, Aneb, uh, Tagaba Haru, who, who is an elder. So and I think if I'm if I'm not mistaken, Sean, the elder is the one that can read the sesh, right? That translated the sesh for Kilimanjaro on them, right? Yara, uh, Yara can get into the sesh. Oh, yeah. Okay, I didn't know that. I didn't know that. Yeah. So, you know, go copy the book, uh, inbox to Kyle Kilimanjaro. Uh, uh, I think I got I got this book from. I don't know if they still doing it. Um. But I got a few. I got all. I got all the books for sale. One book and a few of the books. I know Yahara was doing a while back here, where if you inbox him directly, he'll give you a discount if you get a few other books. I think I got like three books, um, at a discounted rate because I bought three books at one time and I bought the books from him. A few of the books I bought off of Amazon. But this is before I I found that I can actually buy the book directly. But please go and support. Uh, uh, Kim Press and all their uh, publications that they uh, got out. Again, you know, you talked about my art. You know, I'm real firm when we deal with truth, uh, when we deal with building character, uh, we deal with uh, good character, we deal with uh, uh, being uh, great humanitarians, you know what I'm saying, and acknowledge each other's existence. Uh, this was a great presentation, just picking, just vegging back and off of a lot of things. Um, that I have been saying uh, in a few presentations that I have done. Again, I say excellent presentation. And if you're going to say you're African or African descent, you come from Africa, please start acting according to who you say you are. Not saying that everybody, everybody before um, encountering um, foreigners, that there was no bad character. There was bad character and they did certain things to people uh, that bad, that, uh, exhibited bad character but for the most part if you was in these different african societies no matter where you at uh in whatever country you are in africa it was about son hold on son close the door close the door it was about uh exhibiting and and building uh good character um that's all i have um just stay tuned um we'll be back at 6 p.m so tep and Ra, who's on the panel will be doing a presentation um um today so please stay tuned um for that um uh, 
Satep, you want to talk real quick about the presentation for seeing? Jump out of here and for the next, like I said, for the next few. Oh, and before I get off here, excuse me. I just want to apologize again. For the last month, we've been doing like a triple team. We've been doing a Dagger Squad, Master Warrior Clan, and we'll be doing Kofi Paisai TV. Um, last week, we supposed to did something on my channel. I promoted it, been promoting it for a while, then promoted it heavily during the week. And you know, we didn't uh, do the presentation due to the presenter not showing up. So I just want to apologize. It wasn't on my part. I know people was looking forward for us coming on after the Mossy channel and we didn't do anything. So I didn't lie to the family. We was locked and loaded. The presentation was surrounded around. Um, okay, son, was surrounded around his presentation. So we didn't go live. But again, apologize for that. So Tiffany, you want to talk real quick about your presentation, then we can get up, up off you. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'll be going live. Um, Kofi Pasa TV. Um, 7 p.m. Eastern, my time. So I'm on the East Coast. So I'll be doing that. It'll, it'll be the uh, Warrior Kings of Kemet. It's a good presentation. Got a nice lineup of pharaohs that went to war with certain certain people in their time. Um, and uh, yeah, it's going to be good. It's going to be good. Tune in at 7. Yeah, man. Hey, everybody, um, go over to P Kofi Pasa TV and uh, subscribe to Kofi channel, man, and click the bell. Make sure you get the notification because uh, I promise you, to tell presentation will be interesting, and um, and that's how we just gonna do it, you know, from here on out. Is how we rocking. So, uh, oh, well, can I say one more thing, Sean? Before we go, I, I know you ain't want your presentation. So Tep said, said that you long winded. <laughs> So I'm Here's just trying to inform you. Know. Here, Kofi. Go ahead. <laughs> no, I just want to say um, we appreciate supporting us, the Monster Warrior Clan, as well as people supporting uh, my channel. Um, I just want to say uh, stay tuned next week. We're going to come back again, and I'm going to promote it heavy. I might throw out some little juice in between time, probably the next seven days. Uh, probably starting the night until the presentation on the Master Warrior Clan channel. Um, the uh, women, women's circumcision in Africa. Like I said, again, it's a touchy subject, and I just just stay tuned for the presentation. Um, it's gonna be a good presentation. I know some people are gonna be in their feelings, but it's a lot of uh, misconceptions. Uh, it's gonna get cleared up from the outside and from the inside. So please stay tuned for that presentation next week on the Mossy Warrior Clan. And, and following after that uh, will be another presentation on the Kofi Paisai channel, which T'Challa Bangara, who y'all know is the Jehudi Bak Ma'at, will also be accompanying me on the Mossy Warrior Clan next Sunday to do a woman's circumcision presentation. And he's oh, going to do his. I ain't, ain't going to be there either. Oh, and Sin Sean will be in the, bu mm, <laughs> in the building. So... Um, just stay like it's. I, 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 I'm gonna be honest with you. It's gonna be pretty lengthy, but for um, you all to get a to get an understanding, I'm gonna have to go through uh, medical Kofi, records. You ain't gotta explain, that. You ain't gotta explain huh? that, man. Okay, they well, I explain. Be, when it's my they time, I'll be to talk a little bit longer. When it's my time, I'll be to talk a little bit longer. It ain't, about, it, ain't about, it ain't about you talking. It ain't about you talking at all. I'm just saying yeah. they got to be here for that. Yeah. They really got to be here for next week's presentation. When you get into that, they got to they got to be here. They got to be in their seat. They got to they gotta have their pad out because it's going to get serious. That's all you got to say. It's going to get serious. I, I, it's going to get serious. It's going to get serious. But, uh, yeah, just stay tuned for that. And then following right after that, the brother that's doing the presentation with me, he will be doing on a, a, a presentation called Reprogramming the African Mind. And it's actually going to segue into um, segue into what we actually talk about with the misconceptions on the outside perspective that we are getting and we're talking about and not understanding when we're dealing with this controversial topic. So stay tuned for that. And then the following week. A cool said it. He said, don't he look look at look in the chat. He said, Don't spill the jewels. <laughs> yeah you're right so just just stay tuned and then like after that week i'm excited i'll be coming back 
Uh, I don't know if I'll be coming back on uh, Masi or uh, the following week after this. What's the name? I don't know. We'll see how. If Sean got some lined up, it'll be his turn. But if he don't, I'll come back and do. I may do a double hitter because um, this the twenty. That will be the twenty third. I'm going to do uh, the Griots and the, uh, the Griots and the Griotas presentation, which I'm very excited about. Um, explaining to you the different roles of the Griots and the Griotas. You know what I'm saying? And there are many roles and how important they are to society and how it's still prevalent uh, today. So uh, just stay tuned because we working. We, we working. We working. We working. So stay tuned. And again, we appreciate y'all for tuning in. Y'all could have been doing anything else, but y'all tuned in uh, to support us. And again, just continue to support the Master Warrior Clan. Continue to support Kofi Paisa TV. Continue to support Dagger Squad. And again, I just want to say appreciate uh, Brother Garfield for slingshotting um some of his viewers over to our, our channels right afterwards and actually saying our name and promoting our show uh as well uh, that's all peace peace man all right share my share my screen Co. it's on there RPG.
overseas, worldwide. Doing this thing, God is like, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Black fly, how my black fly? It's so for real.